All right. Okay, now I think I'm finally live. This is much better. Welcome, good morning. Sorry for all of the uh, uh, mishmash and uh, testing and, and restarting. I should be in 1080 HD right now. All right, excellent. And if you're listening, um, you're going to be hearing my talking through your left channel. Piano is going to be through the right channel. And I'm going to be doing some buzzing. I'm going to be doing some playing on the trumpet. We're going to be talking about uh, warming up. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Leave me any questions in the chat, and we're going to have a great uh, dialogue this morning. Hopefully some people are, uh, are going to log in. If you're here, share it with your friends, and uh, let people know there's going to be uh, a nice warm-up session happening. So I'm going to wait here a couple minutes. We've got, we've got someone uh, logged in, and uh, hopefully a couple more people are going to pop in here. I'm going to share it. Because why not? This is a warm-up session. Good morning. I'm going to be doing some buzzing. I'm going to be talking about stamp. We're going to do some long tones. We're going to talk about air. We're going to talk about sound. Just consistency, getting ready for the day. Uh, it's going to be fun. And hopefully this turns out well. Uh, I think I'd like to, to start regularly doing some of these uh, sessions, maybe once a week. I don't want to commit myself to uh, too much on my schedule right now beyond all the videos I'm already creating, but I would like to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one where I can really interact with and, and talk with people out there. And I think that is something which is perfect for these YouTube live sessions. If you are watching after the fact, uh, I think I'm going to keep this up. I'm going to see if I can put some uh, time markers in here where you can just jump ahead to different sections. Great. All right. And I'm getting some comments. People can see and hear. Uh, some of this is just me getting used to the system here. So if you're watching and you're like, all right, let's get started. I've, I'm, I'm running a screen here. I'm running a screen here. I've got my camera. I've got an interface for all my audio here. So I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm working with some new gear, but I really want to make sure that it is set up properly and really sound and sounding good. So I'm going to make one more post here. All right, great. So good morning. And uh, thank you for joining me. I've got my coffee, which means I'm officially ready to start warming up. And uh, of course, my name is Josh Rezepka. You knew that if you are here. Um, if this is your first time checking out my channel or any of my videos, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. And today we're going to be talking warming up. We are going to be doing some buzzing, some lip buzzing, some mouthpiece buzzing. And as you can see, I've got my my keyboard set up right here. I am not a great pianist. However, if you can use a keyboard in your warm up, it's going to be great. It's going to help you out. And I actually do the first part of my warm up with the keyboard. And I buzz on the lips and then I buzz on the mouthpiece. And this is this is what I learned from my teacher at Oberlin, Roy Popper. And he learned it from Jimmy Stamp, from James Stamp, who is you know he he didn't create buzzing but he's basically like the godfather of buzzing he really uh brought it to uh, the masses he really took the idea of buzzing and refined it and and uh, disseminated all that information and there are so many of his former students that have gone on to do incredible things in the trumpet world and have then of course shared and taught with their students so I feel very fortunate and lucky to have been able to study with Roy and to learn this 
firsthand from him. You know, it's, this is just uh, uh, once removed from, from James Stamp. And I'm not saying I'm the, the expert. You know, everyone who studied and learned Stamp, this is something important. Everyone who studied and learned Stamp, whoever they learned it from, uh, if they studied from Stamp, they Stamp personalized everything for each student. And the Stamp book that we have right now is basically you know, put together after the fact. And Stamp would write out his core exercises, but he would, he would prescribe them in different manners to each student to, you know, best suit their needs. And that was something that was really, um, you know, great to learn from, from Roy at Oberlin because uh, he wrote his own book, which is, uh, you know, basically how to take the Stamp warm-up and make it work for you. And he would take our stamp book and write inside it, okay, go to page, you know, 22, go to page 6, go to all these different exercises out of order from the book because that's the way he learned and that's the way that, that he knew was going to work best for us. So, um, all right, so I'm going to get started here. Great, we've got seven people watching. Uh, welcome. I've got my, my coffee from Honduras here. Really uh, very tasty. So, first things first. When we're doing stamp, when we're buzzing. Yes, if you're listening right now, um, the talking is going to be in the left ear. The piano is going to be in the right ear. Sorry, it's, uh, it's like that. Uh, this is my first time using all this new this new setup and I'm not quite sure how to adjust to make it mono so that everything is uh, um, is is in the same channel I'll work on that for next time uh, but I'm I'm working through two different channels in my interface I don't have a separate mixer that allows me to uh, pan right and left Chris good morning last name first name good morning yeah Caleb with a K good morning welcome so stamp buzzing the first thing we're going to do is is the lip buzzing all right and a lot of people they they think that lip buzzing is like some sub not a substitute but that it's supposed to be similar to the mouthpiece that it's supposed to be similar to what you're doing on the trumpet and for me that's not my take my take is that the lip buzzing is it's a stretch i'm getting my ear working I'm getting my lips vibrating, and you're going to hear uh, with how low I start that it really is uh, um, just to get me loose and warmed up. So here's middle middle C on the trumpet. We're going to go down two octaves from there, and I'm going to start in this pattern. And that's, of course, the, uh, the beginning of stamp. I'm going to start in that pattern, and I'm going to go up chromatically. And then chromatically, and we're going to do that for about two octaves. And slow and easy, and I'm going to count two, three, breathe on four. And then we're going to buzz really low, all right? And this is the start, and this is going to get us into the mouthpiece once, uh, once we go through this. So I'm going to uh, start here with, with the keyboard, and we're going to start nice and low, and try and have as good of a posture as you can. Nice, big, full breaths. You don't have to go crazy. It's not... <gasps> just take a relaxed breath. Remember, warming up, we're trying to create balance and just uh, start from a place of relaxation so we can get into our day with ease, without, without you know, tensing up. So, uh, here we go. One, two, three, four. So I didn't take a breath there because I was counting. One, two, three. Is 
is the buzzing and the and the tr and the piano all coming through okay? I know it's pretty low. So you can see when you're this low, the chops, they're really just, it's like flapping almost. And if you're having difficulty buzzing this low, don't worry. I've been doing, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been, I've been doing stamp for a very long time. It takes some time. And even if you're just flapping your lips right now, that's totally fine and okay. Don't think that you need to do the same, you know, it's not the same as you're playing with the mouthpiece and the trumpet. Uh, we're just getting the lips moving and coordinating our air, all right? And throughout this entire first process, when we're lip buzzing, when we are mouthpiece buzzing, uh, we want to use a breath attack, all right? The poo attack. I discussed this in one of my more recent videos. Um, we don't want to use the tongue. We just want to get the air moving and the lips responding to the air. making our way up. And when I was at Oberlin as a student, um, Mr. Popper, Roy, he used to have warm-up sessions. I think it was three or four days a week um, the whole time I was there. 8 a.m., he would uh, meet us all in one of the rehearsal rooms, and he would lead us through this warm-up on the piano. And we would do it every day, and just, it was a great way for us to really kind of get that ingrained. And he, uh, you know, he did it on the piano. And if you can do it on the piano as well, one of the great things that I, that I think not enough people talk about with regard to buzzing is how great it is for training our ears. It is such a great ear training exercise. And because we don't have the trumpet to kind of guide us to those notes, we really need to hear them and create them. Um, and that's like such a great thing about this. It's activating our air and our ears uh, from like from the beginning, which is which is really great. <laughs> So we've just done a whole octave, and we're going to keep going. And one thing I want to add here uh, with regard to volume, all right, how loud should we really be buzzing? And how loud should we play? be buzzing on the lips and then on the mouthpiece? Um, so for those of you who are joining now who weren't here a couple minutes ago, uh, like I said at the beginning, we're trying to create balance. We're trying to ease in. And I don't know if you've seen it, but if you go online, I'll try and see if I can uh, put in the link of the comments uh, after the video. There is a great 
article someone posted years and years ago, um, and it was a translation from a master class, a warm-up master class by Hoken Hardenberger. And, of course, uh, uh, Hoken is, is also doing stamp, and he's buzzing. And he puts it so well. And, and what he's really talking about is just, is just creating balance and, you know, using ease and really just trying to, trying to make things happen with, with only as much effort as is needed. And that's really, uh, uh, I think if you keep that mindset and if you have that approach, you're really going to make the most out of, out of stamp because then you're not going to be trying too hard. You're not going to be trying to turn it into some uh, isometric ex- exercise where you're really just, you know, trying to build and strengthen muscles in the chops. Um, I think that stamp is really just trying to create a balance between uh, the air and the chops and the ears, and that's why it's so effective because it, it you know, it, it really activates those those core ideas. All right, we're going to keep moving on, and we're going to do one more octave, and then we're going to move on to the mouthpiece. So now uh, we're going to end right here when we're done, and that is lip buzzing to a G in the staff. If it's difficult for you, again, uh, it takes some time. You know, I've been doing this uh, for, like I said, I think around almost uh, ooh, 20, a long time. So <laughs> we want to, uh, uh, 19 years, so we want to, uh, you know, don't get hard on yourself. Just do what you can, but don't, you know, kind of uh, force and, and create bad habits to try and get it to happen. If it doesn't happen, that's totally fine. Uh, just uh, make sure that whatever you're doing is is with ease and feels uh, you know, in control and, and relaxed. may seem like a lot of lip buzzing, but I'm doing a fair amount of talking here, and, uh, you know, when I'm doing it on my own, it goes pretty quick. Two, three. How's everyone doing? Are you able to follow along? Is, uh, feeling all right on the chops? Let me know in the comments. Two, three. So starting at this this uh, concert uh, F, then I'm gonna go. All right, so we've just got six more. Five more until we move on to the mouthpiece. And if this seems like it's a lot of lip buzzing, you build up to it. You build up to it. Um, all right. Two, three. And for me, I find actually... For me, I find actually that that with lip buzzing, and this may be different for different people, um, a lot of times my tongue is actually it's resting on the bottom of my mouth, right? And remember, we're doing uh, lip, uh, we're doing air attacks, poo, and my tongue is actually kind of over my. It's not like out, but it's. I think the tip of my tongue is 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 often touching the bottom of the inside of my bottom lip 
Um, and for me, that's just how it is naturally. <laughs> and that's not how it is when I play the trumpet. But that's just what allows me to stay more relaxed. And <laughs> so try that out. You may feel... <laughs> You may feel that it works better for you. It may work worse for you. Um, but really, whatever works well for you, um, at this point, that's what you want to you wanna go for. Whatever's going to allow you to be really relaxed. Two, Oftentimes on my own, I'll actually keep going until I get to here. Um, and then I go all the way down to that double pedal C, and I know that's a lot. Um, and that's just is where I've developed and where I've taken it to. And generally speaking, uh, if you can play it on the piano, that's great. Um, I'll be honest, most mornings, most days when I'm doing my warm-up, um, I actually have a recording that I made of me playing it on a Steinway. And uh, this is actually from when I was at Oberlin. I have a recording that I made doing the whole warm-up as, as uh, Roy would do it on the piano. And that's what I play along to. And it's, it's just a little... Uh, it's just a little uh, easier because I'm not actually playing the piano, and then I don't have to have my piano set up all the time. Uh, but if I'm on the road and I find a piano, of course I sit down and, and I do my warm-up. Um, if I've got a nice real piano, um, I, I love doing the warm-up on the piano. All right, so now we're going to move into the mouthpiece. And... Uh, let me know in the comments if you're if you're already doing mouthpiece buzzing, if you enjoy it, if you like it. Um, stamp, doing the mouthpiece buzzing. We want to use the breath attack, right? That poo attack. And we don't want to be too loud. Remember, everything we do on the on the mouthpiece is amplified by the trumpet. So if we're playing a forte on the mouthpiece, that's like playing a fortissimo or fortississimo on the on the trumpet. Um, it's it's a couple dynamics quieter on the mouthpiece. So really keep that in mind. If you're playing a piano or a pianissimo, that's totally fine. And one thing that Stamp would teach, or one thing I learned from from Roy about buzzing is that if you're right-handed, you hold the mouthpiece with your left hand. If you're left-handed, you hold the mouthpiece with your right hand. Whatever is your less dominant hand, that's the one you want to hold the mouthpiece with. And then about two-thirds down the mouthpiece, just with two fingers. You don't want to grip it tight. And two fingers, nice and easy. Don't pinch your fingers too tight. We don't want all that tension. Nice and relaxed. Just two-thirds down. Hold it nice and easy. And... What this is going to do is is really just help us and help us keep from smashing into our face and from using too much pressure and from using uh, too much, um, you know, uh, 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 well, we don't want to smash our face. And this is really just going to allow us to not do that. And again, breath attack. We're still on the breath attack. So, poo. And... 
that's on the on the mouthpiece. So here's what we're gonna do. A moment ago, we just went up chromatically, right? Now we're gonna go diatonically. So. Once we get up to the concert G, sorry if the levels are high, all right, we're going to keep doing that, and then once we get up to the high C, big breath, see if you can really take it all the way down to the bottom all right so I'm gonna do that and, and uh, I'm not gonna interrupt and talk in the middle we're just gonna start and then we're gonna go all the way through if you're having trouble holding out some of the notes or getting them it's okay just reset for the next one make sure you're breathing in tempo breathing in tempo is so important two right three two three breath attack two three and that's the habit we're trying to develop and here we go one two three I'm going to interrupt, sorry. Um, one thing, this is great, and this is something Stamp used to say, and this is something that that uh, that Roy taught us. Um, in trumpet, in buzzing, and playing the trumpet, half notes are free, all right? And what he means by that uh, is that we don't need to change our chops. We don't have to really do anything to move a, a, a half step, a semitone, right? Um, so... I want to, here is the semitone, right? And we're going to buzz this first note. It's an E, right? Going to an F. And I'm going to just hold it, and I'm going to go two, three. And then I want you at home to two, three. And then when I gesture, just think in your head, that F. Just think what it sounds like. Don't focus or try and change your chops or your air or anything. Just focus on what the sound is, and I think you're going to be surprised. That note is just going to come out. All right. Two. Three. All right, let's do it one more time. All right, did that work for anyone? Let me know in the comments. Uh, for me, it's always like, oh my God, like, this is amazing. I, I didn't have to do anything. I have to change or try in order to play that half step. And if that's something that we can really take to heart and, and internalize and, and remember, then it's like, how many half steps are we playing each day? How many half steps do we have in our playing? Uh, how often are we, are we coming across, uh, you know, a half step? And if every single one of those situations, we realize that we're potentially working harder than we need to, um, then we can learn how to do it even easier. And that's going to improve everything, our, our endurance, our response, our sound. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. Uh, for me, uh, I always found that to be something uh, that was, uh, was really awesome. So we're continuing onward with a half step at the beginning. Two. So that was Lou. 
Euclidean, we had that half step at the top. to the tone of our buzz um, Roy would always say that it's okay to have air in your buzz all right you, you don't need to like the most piercing you know buzz sound there is um, it's 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 good to have a little bit of kind of we, we don't want it to be fuzzy but to have some air in there um, and have a fullness fullness of buzz out we're going further down than where we started So now we've got two half steps, right? So remember, half steps are free. Last one, and this, we're going to go from the high C all the way down to the double pedal C. <laughs> we're going to just go, da, and remember, it's that half step at the top, da, and just keep going and keep going. Two. So that is the the first bit of the of the mouthpiece buzzing. And again, when I do this every morning, um, it goes a lot quicker, of course, because I'm not talking and and I'm kind of just doing one after the next. And for some of you, if you're not used to buzzing a lot, um, don't do all of this. Just do a couple of them. Do a little bit. Incorporate it into your playing um, a little bit at a time. Five minutes and. Uh, you know, three minutes, then do five minutes uh, the next week, and then do seven minutes the next week until you feel comfortable. And y we never want to get to the point where we feel like we're working too much, where we feel like we're um, getting tired, because that's not the purpose and the point of, of the mouthpiece and stamp. And right now, if, you're, if your lips, if your chops, if your chops feel tingly, if it's, if it's like, ooh, like a... Uh, you know, they, they kind of feel tingly. That's normal. That's okay. Um, that That's going to happen for a while until you really get used to it. That's the blood just kind of, you know, getting in there. It's, it's you know, your ch your chops are experiencing and feeling a new a new sensation of, of buzzing if they're not used to it. And it's just, you know, all that vibration is just, uh, they're not used to it. 
Now, I don't feel that. Uh, you know, I don't experience that unless I take a couple of days off and then I get into it. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, this is this is what I feel. Or if I do some of the more extended uh, things in the stamp book. So another important thing, of course, is coffee, as far as I'm concerned, with warming up. Uh, uh, coffee is uh, uh, is 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 an equal part of my warm up. So <laughs> now this is the the stamp, you know, the the exercise everyone's familiar with, right? And there are variations. Uh, we're just gonna do the the standard one right now. Excuse me. That's the one that I've done for so long. Um, and then uh, after I graduated from Oberlin, after I got my master's degree, I then uh, had the opportunity for a year to study on and off with Michael Sachs and first trumpet of the Cleveland Orchestra and uh, brilliant, brilliant teacher and uh, uh, just the greatest guy. And also he studied with Stamp and he gave me a totally different perspective of stamp, which was, which was great, and he. He really talked about flow a lot, and really making sure that it wasn't too metronomic, that it wasn't. Or. You know, he really had a flow to it, and. We worked on those extended uh, exercises a little bit more, and uh, that's just something to keep in mind, that you want to really uh, feel like you're singing. Da, da, ye, oh, ye, ah, oh, right? <coughs> so uh, here we go. So I'm going to go two, three, breathe on four, and play. We're still doing the breath attack. What is stamp, really? It's really just Schlossberg. Right? The beginning of Schlossberg, but it's got, it's got whole steps. And the reason for that is because stamp realized that players were, were dragging the notes down. They saw, you know, C, G, C, and da. They were kind of transmitting. They were, they were, uh, uh, you know, letting people know the direction that they were going before they played it because they saw they were moving somewhere lower and they were starting to kind of drag their playing down. And that's not a good way to play the trumpet. So Stamp said, "All right, well, we're going to move in the opposite direction first, right?" <laughs> that way, you're you're kind of stepping on a gas a little bit and. And Stamp would say, um, you know, uh, uh, think think up, right, as you go down, and think down as you go up. That way that you're going you're gonna to keep yourself from getting in that habit of, of kind of transmitting the direction that you're going. And that's what it was. He was taking the Schlossberg exercise and, and just augmenting it a little bit uh, to help people um, really make sure that they are uh, being accountable for exactly what it is. Sorry. So the attack on that one for me was 
so happening. And I just didn't have the air. <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't have the airspeed <coughs> moving how it needed to be at the beginning. a low F. Now we're starting to get into the pedal register on the mouthpiece. As we uh, we've got two more and then uh, we're gonna do the opposite of what we did earlier so earlier we got up to the high C and then we went all the way down low this time we're gonna be down at a, at a low uh, you know at the low C and we're gonna keep going down and then we're gonna go all the way up uh, but we've got one more before then demonstrate first and then we'll do it together because it's we're going to take a big breath uh, this is going to go down to a low C all right a pedal C and we're going to go all the way up um, let's do it in steps this is what Roy would do this is uh this is how I learned from Mr. Popper we're going to do it in steps so And then we're going to add a half step. Da, and then da, until we're up to that high C. And then once we can do that, um, we're going to do the, uh, the, hardest, the hardest bit of it. Um, all right. So here we go. Um, that's what we're doing. Two, three. All right, and now we're going to go up one more uh, in the series. staff and then to a G Now we're gonna make our way up to the high C. So we're really connecting our registers, right? We're doing a pedal C all the way up to a high C. And this is another one of the things that Stamp, uh, I think personally is so great for because uh, when we play in the pedal register, we want the same, we wanna have a real embouchure, right? And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm gonna give you uh, two quick uh, anecdotes here. So uh, one is from uh, Pierre Thibault, uh, out of his books that are that were published by Ball Quitter, they were just bought. Um, but he's got three books, and and in one of them, it's uh, it's pedals and bends, and he's he's basically saying, the pedal F, we want to maintain the first valve, and really the embouchure come, you know, he says it moves it moves uh, it moves forward and thickens a little bit, and and Stamp would say the same thing, and that we're kind of uh, 
Uh, Roy would always say monkey lips, like we're kind of, you know, moving into the mouthpiece, like we're pushing up to it, and we're creating that support. All right, we want to have that that support. It's not it's not that we're smashing the face. We're we're developing a nice uh, foundation, and with regard to maintaining that same embouchure throughout the registers and going into the pedal register. We don't want to go like a, you know, or some people go like this, like, you know, they, they take one of their lips and put it underneath. Um, that's not what we're going after. And I'm working on a big, I'll, I'll, I'll let it, the cat out of the bag a little bit. I'm working on a, uh, a big interview project right now that I'll be posting hopefully the first uh, episode there's going to be 15 in this series hopefully the first episode will be posted in maybe um, two weeks and one day that's my goal um, Thursday the uh, 25th and I've been interviewing um, all these trumpet players I think it may be somewhere around 16 18 by the time I'm done Excuse me, today is the 13th interview. And I've been speaking with a lot of big names in the trumpet world. And uh, I had an opportunity a couple of weeks ago to uh, chat with Arturo Sandoval. And it was great talking to him and hearing about, about uh, you know, low notes. He calls them low notes. He doesn't say pedal notes. He says they're low notes. You know, it's like if you go on a piano, it's not a pedal note down here. It's not a, you know, it's just a low note. And this is a high note. So... He likes to say the same thing on the trumpet. It's a low note. And because of that, we keep the same, you know, basic basic structure going on. Uh, so we don't want to lose our embouchure. We want to keep that support. And a lot of people, as they're in the low notes, in the, as they're in this pedal range, uh, they really give up this support in their chops. And, and it actually takes a, even more support than most people realize and think to really get those pedal notes to to resonate and come out. So uh, that's what I want you to keep in mind as we are doing this. All right. One, two, three. Sorry, I didn't give the chord ahead of time. Let's do it again. Two. So now, this is what Roy used to, to quiz us and, and, and test us on every day. Uh, we're going to do that same thing. I'm going to speed up a little bit at the beginning. And we're going to get to the, the C. And we're going to see how far we can go. All right. Not easy. Um, there were only a handful of times. <laughs> Only a handful of times that I would get that whole octave. Um, so this is teaching us economy of air. This is teaching us to really be efficient with what we're doing. Take a nice big full breath, of course, but don't waste your air anywhere. Play at a, at a easy and soft volume and uh, see how far you can go. You may only be able to go, and that's it. Totally fine, but uh, see how far you can get. One. Try to get it. Try to get there. That is uh, that is not easy, um, and that is that's that's what he would test us on, and, and basically what we would end uh, um, the second to last thing that we would end with. And then this is the last thing that we're going to buzz on the mouthpiece. And again, if this seems like a lot of buzzing, 
Um, well, quite frankly, it is. Um, but I've I'm do I've been doing this for years, and without all the talking and chatter, it really only takes me about ten minutes or so. Um, but I want to make sure that all of you watching really kind of get a sense for this and and uh, and an understanding for how to approach it, so you can start implementing it into your playing. So now we're just going to do this. back to home base and then we're going to move on to the trumpet and do that same stamp bit on the trumpet extremely low and I could not get this for a very long time so if you're struggling um, that is completely fine don't worry about it um, and uh, just you know do as much as you can and really the goal with all of this is just to try and get a little better a little bit better each time all right remember breath attack I saw a question there. Uh, Kevin, I'm going to get to you in just a second. So it sounds like a mess, and that's totally fine, and that's okay. Um, that is the end of the buzzing on the mouthpiece we're going to do, and now we're going to transition into the uh, the trumpet bit here. Um, Kevin, what piccolo mouthpiece do I play on? That's a good question. Let me take a peek. So, of course, I am a... Uh, a, a Dennis Wick artist, uh, but Dennis Wick doesn't make a piccolo trumpet mouthpiece. Uh, so um, this is a picket brass, and this is the P6E with the number 127 uh, uh, backbore throat on it. I have no idea what any of that means. Um, Peter Pickett makes fantastic mouthpieces, and I played Pickett for a long time before I switched to um, Dennis Wick for my B flat and C and flugel. Uh, you know, everything that they make a, a mouthpiece for. Um, and this, the one thing that I really love about Peter Pickett and uh, is, be is if you meet him in person and you play test mouthpiece and you say, okay, this is what I need, um, he'll ask you what you do, what you're currently playing on, and then he'll say, okay, try this, and he'll hand you something, and then you'll be like, what is this? doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just play it, right? We we tend to get kind of caught up with numbers. Uh, some of us, and I'm not, you know, making any judgments here. A lot of people get get caught up with numbers. I don't really know what the numbers mean, um, but for me, this feels good and it plays really well. Um, s but it is a P6E, so I guess that's Piccolo 6E, um, and the 127. I have no idea what that means at all. But that is what I play on the Piccolo. Um, for years and years, I will say, I did play a Bach uh, 6E on the piccolo trumpet. All right, so this next part is going to be quick. We are moving on to the trumpet. And just as we were on the mouthpiece, we're doing breath attacks, all right? Poo attack. And... If you know the stamp, you can play along. If you don't, um, the pattern isn't that hard. 
I don't have the sheet music that I can share, um, but uh, you can uh, purchase this damn book. It is it is a book well worth having. Having. I'm going to put that metronome on. That way it'll be two, three. Um, no, I'm going to just count. I want, I want it to kind of flow. All right. Two. And why don't you guys repeat after me, actually, at home? So I'll play, and then you repeat after me. So <coughs> here's the next one. Two, three. And it's always good to have a tuner handy. If you can, pull it out. Make sure uh, you're tuning your octaves. And... One uh, one thing that we're going to, again, do our breath attacks. And le on this next one, let's try a poo poo two, right? So we're doing two breath attacks. That's supported. That's setting up the articulation. It's getting the, the and then we're just kind of adding the tongue to kind of shape it a little bit and get the tongue uh, involved. All right. So that poo poo too can be really added, uh, you know, any time throughout your practice. But uh, here's a good way, uh, or he, you know, here's a good spot that I can kind of introduce it. But uh, generally, with this whole warm up, is only only with a breath attack. And I'm not forcing anything. I'm playing at a nice even, uh, you know, kind of relaxed volume. These are just a couple notes from uh, starting to get into the pedal range, and I will introduce that when we get there. So now we're into the pedal notes, right? That pedal F, first valve. Um, we want to make sure that our pedal notes, we're playing with the same valve that we did the octave above, all right? Except the pedal C. The pedal C, you can you can do one, two, and three. Uh, for some people, pedal C doesn't happen. Uh, Arturo can play a pedal C. Sounds like a, like a bass trumpet, like a trombone. It's beautiful. Um, Michael Sachs, talking with him, studying with him. He, you know, I think I remember he told me once. He's like, you know, you could, you could, you could offer me uh, any amount of money. You know, a million dollars to play a, a pedal C open, and uh, you get to keep your money. I can't do it. You know, I got to use one, two, three. So, whatever works for you, um, for the pedal C, uh, do that. All right, now uh, we are on to the E.
you can use the slide on the low D and the low C sharp in order to in order to get those in tune. Um, a lot of it, as we're so low, is is sure going to just be with our air and just you know getting it into a place. A lot of the times, these low notes we need to allow them to happen. Allow you know we don't want to you know force and wrangle too much. Uh, so in instead of thinking so much like placing the notes, uh, think allowing them to happen. And this is kind of like a um, a thought and and a, a methodology that I got from uh, from a couple years of uh, Alexander Technique uh, study and lessons that I took. And it Alexander Technique, with regard to your posture, is is not so much as as making something happening, um, but or making something not happen. It's it's allowing your body to work the way that it wants to. So really get that tuner and make sure that you're just really using your ears and listening and letting the notes settle where they where they want. Um, so we're down to the low uh, C sharp now. One, two. So actually we just repeated that. Now we're in the low C and I'm going to do it twice. The first time I'm going to play just how I've been playing it, and the second time See if you can do that. You heard how it sounded. We want the best sound that we can get on that low C. Um, I wish I I had such a big full pedal C uh, uh, like Arturo did, or my friend Avi. Um, but you know, we just keep working on it, keep working on it. So now I'm going to do the same thing, and then I'm going to go up to that high C. One, two, three. <laughs> a little sharp on that but uh, uh, oh I added an extra note there let's do it one more time let's do that one more time without adding the note and I'm going to add the half step like we did earlier all right one now we're really connecting our registers all right um, and if you get that Thibaut book that I was talking about and I'll see if I can link it below I'm reminding myself I'm gonna link the uh, the warm-up um, master class that was translated uh, that Hook and Hardenberger uh, did years and years ago that was posted online that is brilliant and then I'm gonna link this uh, this book by Pierre Thibaut um, which also is is just so great and he talks about the pedal register, the low F, and the chops, and the support that you need. And Thibaut actually says um, that your chops for that low F, they move forward, they, and that's the support that you can use for playing everything on the trumpet, which is kind of crazy, I think. Um, but he's really, uh, he's really on to something. Because if you listen... I'm trying to stay easy, right? And uh, a little shaky there on the F, but coming from that pedal F, right? Just working my way up. There goes my tuner. Working your way up and really connecting 
uh, is going to just <coughs> allow you to uh, have more flexibility and get around the trumpet even better. Um, a week ago, I think, or, or two, uh, Trent Austin posted a great uh, video on YouTube, on his YouTube channel. Um, you should check it out if you haven't yet. And he's basically talking about, um, you know, motion and playing. And, and the idea he was getting at is, is that we only have a limited amount of motion that we can do on the trumpet uh, before we've moved too much, right? A lot of people, they kind of pivot as they play or... Or there's a little bit of movement in embouchure, but there's only so much movement we can have before before that's it. You know, until we can't play any higher or any lower. And what we are, what are, what we're trying to do, and what I feel Stamp really does so great is help to uh, kind of streamline everything so that that the motion becomes less and less. The less we need to move from one note to the next, um, then the greater uh, ability we're going to have to be able to expand up and down because uh, you know every octave that we that we go is going to actually take a little bit less of that motion and this is uh, something that's in that Tebow book and he says uh, you know just like Stamp said um, the the uh, interval of a of a semitone the interval of an octave should be no more difficult than than a than the feeling of a semitone. Right, and remember earlier what I said about half steps. Right, half steps are free, and if you take that and you digest it all, you're like, wow. So the trumpet should really be that easy. Is that possible? And then you listen to someone like uh, Alan Vizzuti, who plays the impossible. He can double tongue octaves. He can do all these 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 things that most of us just say is crazy or impossible, but. Is it crazy and impossible, or has he really just internalized that? Has he gotten, ha has he gotten that idea and said, "Oh, wait a minute, a half step can be, an octave can be just as as easy as a half step," and listening to him play, that really shows us that that's the truth. Um, so that's something that I really kind of keep in mind. Let me pick up my uh, Jimmy here. That's all right. All right, so I know I've been talking and, and, and buzzing uh, quite a lot. Um, do we have any questions from anyone uh, regarding any of this warm-up stuff? Um, I, I know I said I'd, I'd do some long tones, too, and we're going to do a little bit of long tones here before uh, uh, we, we wrap this stream up. For, for everyone who's been sticking around this whole time, I don't know how many of you that is, uh, thank you uh, for joining me on this uh, first live stream that I've done. I hope that it, it sounds okay. I'm going to get the sound... Uh, figured out for next time so that it isn't uh, left, right, and left and right ear uh, with regard to uh, me talking and then the piano and trumpet. Uh, I'm going to get that uh, sorted out a little bit better for next time. But if you have any questions, let me know in the chat. Um, I want to thank you for all uh, kind of tuning in. So now we're going to do some long tones. And the long tones that I like to do um, are out of the uh, Michael Sachs book. And Basically, he's just adding a, a, a half step down to his long tones. And we're going to take that idea. So we're going to set our metronome here to 60. All right. And you should be able to hear this. It's not so loud. But that's the metronome. And... I'm going to do, what's up, Ryan? How you doing? Great. Warming up. I just uh, played and, and talked through a, a very extensive uh, uh, stamp kind of introductory uh, warm-up. And we're going to do some long tones right now. So um, what I'm going to do is hold for um, eight beats, G, down to an F sharp, four beats, back to a G, and eight beats. All right. One. And you can do with now you can do with a regular articulation or you can keep doing that poo articulation or the poo poo too. Um, you know, ease into it. One, two, three. <laughs>
Oh, actually, I uh, um, I didn't even play that. They were the same beats that I said I was going to. Uh, so we're gonna sorry, we're gonna do four, four, and then eight. Um, I've been recorded two attacks as it's very recent video. Appreciate the reminder. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, if you're hey everyone, if you're not familiar with Ryan Beach, uh, uh, another fantastic uh, a trumpet player out there who's got a great YouTube channel. Uh, he's got he's got some excellent videos you want to check out. Um, and uh, great production value. I, I really uh, enjoy his videos. All right, F sharp to an F. Two. Uh oh, I lost you there. <coughs> My stream. I lost you there. It'll come back. Now we're on an F. One. the stream working okay is it too blurry oh looks good now one two three <laughs> So, you know, by now I've done my buzzing, I've done my stamp. I'm just getting into the long tones, and uh, I'm gonna do uh, uh, just uh, two, three more here, and then then I'll kind of finish up. And just doing simple, easy, nothing too loud, nothing too soft. And what camera mic am I using? I am using a uh, Canon uh, R6. It's a relatively uh, new camera; just came out. Um, if you're into cameras, it's a, a incredible, awesome camera, uh, and I have it connected directly to my computer. Um, just a, a USB uh, a C to a USB A, uh, you know, the 3.0 cable. That's got to be. It's one of the Tether Tools cable, uh, one of those orange cables. Um, works great. It is way too expensive for a cable, but uh, that's what you need for this. Um, this is a uh, Rode NT1A. Um, hopefully sometime soon I'm going to get one of those uh, uh, Barkley um, ribbon microphones. I've been chatting with uh, Michael Barkley, who's an awesome, uh, uh, great guy, fantastic uh, trumpeter and microphone builder. And I do have a, uh, an Apogee Duet um, that I need to kind of install in order to get everything working. But right now I'm using an M Audio M-Track 2x2 um, as my input. So that's what this is into, and that's what my keyboard is into as well. That's why it's right and left channel because it's just as, uh, um, it's just uh, as uh, channel one, channel two, and I'm using uh, Streamlabs OBS in order to stream, and I have that hooked up with my with my YouTube account. Um, so I still need to figure out exactly how to how to uh, optimize. Uh, I need to. I just don't know how to operate the mixer on this to pan and, and get everything centered. Um, all right, let me do two more. Uh, what kind of uh, I'm? What kind of camera and, and mic are you using? We need to connect uh, maybe this week. I'm going to do one more long tone here. If anyone else has got any questions, let me know uh, in the chat. I'm happy to answer anything, and I'm going to do a poo-poo two attack on this last one. And uh, then I'm going to sign off. I want to thank all of you for hanging out with me this morning and uh, warming up. Hopefully, uh, uh, I know it was a long one. I was talking a lot, but 
like I said, I wanted to make sure that that uh, everyone, uh, even if you were well acquainted or or for the first time, uh, be, you know, being uh, exposed to Stamp and some of these buzzing ideas that you felt comfortable and that you felt that you were able to participate uh, in a meaningful uh, a way without, you know, uh, doing anything that's going to, you know, negatively uh, impact your trumpet playing. see oh nice nice um, yeah I do have a second microphone uh, that I can use that I'm going to once I get that uh, Apogee duet set up that I'm going to be able to then use um, this for uh, talking and then I'm going to use my other microphone for the trumpet and then um, Hopefully I can get that all set out. I'm gonna click on this mixer and see what I can do, um, and see what it what it says. Oh, how does this sound now? Is this uh, is this all mono? I think it is. Let me know. I think I may have fixed it. Does that sound mono? Test one two. Yes. Ryan, thank you. Last name, first name. Thank you. Um, so, well, I've got that fixed for next time. So let me know uh, if you like this, if you enjoy this, hit that like button, please. And uh, let me know in the comments if if you enjoy this. Is this a thing that you would, is this type of warm-up something you would, that you would enjoy me doing more often? Maybe once a week uh, doing a, doing a uh, lead warm-up session. We can just kind of do some stamp and, and get into it and do some buzzing. And incorporate some uh, different exercises. If everyone's really into it, maybe I'll, I could even uh, write out a little bit of a warm up and and make it available to download, and then we could kind of just play through that. Let me know. I want to create content that is going to be helpful for all of you that's out there. All right, we're all in this together. We're all trying to get better on the trumpet. Uh, we're all trying to, you know, just. Uh, uh, get a little bit better each day that's all we can do right and uh, if this is going to be helpful for all you and 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 you'll be uh, engaged and then then I will be glad to uh, you know kind of set this up and, and do that type of thing uh, if you've been wondering uh, where uh, my videos are I haven't posted in about two weeks I'm gonna try and post something tomorrow um, I've been pretty busy behind the scenes I've kind of tore my studio apart in order to do um, a whole bunch of videos that I was hired to make uh, which I can't announce or say anything about but I'm nearly done with all of those and then also um, I've been doing all of these interviews um, to Dylan, thank you so much and I'm gonna I've been doing a lot of interviews as I mentioned um, I've got an interview project um, I'll give a little sneak peek right now. I'll let you know what it's about. Um, I'm going to do a video that introduces the whole project. So, um, basically, the uh, this big interview project is um, I've reached out to a whole bunch of trumpeters. Um, and it's going to be about either 16 or 18 in the end. Um, Well-known trumpeters across the world. And I've interviewed so far... Um, as of this afternoon, it will be 13 of them, and I've got one scheduled. My last one is scheduled for two weeks from, uh, to, my last one is scheduled for the 22nd, and I'm hoping to release my first video on the 25th, and I've spoken with, uh, Michael Sachs of, sp of the Cleveland Orchestra, with Taga Larson of the Chicago Symphony, with, with, uh, Tina ting Helseth. Uh, I've spoken with Bria Skomberg yesterday, uh, Bijan Watson, uh, Chris Coletti, uh, Arturo Sandoval. I've really spoken with 
um, a lot of uh, very well-known trumpeters that are out there. Um, Kenny Rampton. Uh, I'm chatting with our with uh, uh, Roger Ingram later today. Um, really, I've been I've been speaking with a lot of trumpeters, and here's the thing: I've asked all of them the exact same questions, the exact same 15 questions, and <coughs> what I'm doing is creating a 15 video series where each video is one question answered by everybody that I'm talking with, all right? Um, so you're gonna hear the question, hey, you know, what do you X, Y, Z, or, or how do you X, Y, Z? And then you're gonna hear it answered by all these people, by, uh, you know, Ingrid Jensen, by Selena Ott, um, you know, everyone that I've spoken with, you're gonna hear all these, all these answers. And I think it's gonna be really very cool um, it's a lot of editing. Yes, um, it's gonna. <laughs> each one of these videos is uh, between uh, uh, 45 minutes and an hour and a half that I've interviewed already. So at this point, I already have 16 hours of video uh, in the can, uh, and by the end, I'll have probably 20 that I need to edit down. But I'm gonna release one video a week for 15 weeks. <coughs> and uh, I spoke with Karen Bliznik. Um, uh, I spoke. Uh, let me see where my list is. So I can't even, you know, off the top of my head, remember everyone that I've spoken with. Um, who did I mention? Uh, Leslie Vonner I spoke with. Um, also, uh, yeah, so all those people that I mentioned, those are the people that I've spoken with so far. Um, I still have a couple that are, I'm working on scheduling. You know, s uh, some of the people that uh, I've mentioned, uh, as you heard, they're pretty big names in the trumpet world. There's a couple more, and uh, you know they're teaching at universities. They're leading pro jazz programs. They're leading you know their own uh, uh, studios and departments. So uh, scheduling with them has been a little a little tricky, but um, I'm super excited about this. Uh, just some of the some of the answers and conversations I've had have been really great. I'm not going to release any of the individual conversations, but it's going to be all um, it's going to be all just, you know, chopped up so you hear hear that question and then you hear the answer from everybody and get John Diversa. Uh yeah, well at this point um ooh Tommy th well thank you for that. Um at this point if I add um uh, more too many more people then each one of these videos might be like 90 minutes long. Um there I want to try and keep them to an hour or less if possible <coughs> cuz some of the answers on some of these questions you know, from each person, uh, sometimes they're a minute or two minutes, but sometimes they're they're three, four, five. You know, these are they're they're good good long answers where they're uh, really discussing some great stuff. And uh, that times twenty, some of the videos may already be uh, a over an hour. And I don't want two hour videos uh, just for the sake of, uh, of of rendering and export on my computer. But also, I want to make you know be conscious to not put. Uh, videos on YouTube that are so long that people aren't going to really um, get into it and watch it. Uh, so um, I, I have a feeling people are going to really dig this series, and if they do, then um, I will do round two, in which case I'll be contacting um, another group of, of trumpeters and musicians. I didn't really quite anticipate that all the people that I asked um, – that practically everyone that I've reached out to would get back to me and be enthusiastic about it and say yes. So uh, a couple of people didn't get back to me. Totally fine. Totally cool. I don't know everyone. I had good introductions for a lot of people, and I knew a lot of people to begin with. Um, but, you know, everyone uh, everyone has got uh, their own schedules and their own lives and, and, and their own things going on. So, but I'm very, very grateful and thankful for everyone who, who uh, you know, was willing to participate and, and uh, and give me an hour of their time for an interview because I think I think that people are really gonna dig it and uh, and like it. So that's been going on behind the scenes. Uh, so that's kind of why I haven't posted in the last two weeks. I've got uh, thirteen of thirteen of these uh, uh, interviews in the can already. Uh, so just a couple more and and then I'll be there. Um, yeah, I think people. Uh, I think people are getting getting hip to YouTube. Of course, so many people have been there uh, all along, and uh, I I've been like a really uh, kind of big uh, YouTube uh, junkie. I I would say you know I'm I'm I've been watching a lot of YouTube for years, 
and not just like pulling up tunes like oh I'm gonna go you know watch this concert or I'm gonna listen to this song or like I've been following a lot of YouTubers you know a lot of vloggers and a lot of uh, uh, reviewers uh, mostly kind of camera gear tech gear uh, that type of stuff uh, kind of come in from that like Casey Neistat and then uh, Peter McKinnon you know all these cats that are like in the YouTube world uh, you know MKBHD uh, you know kind of big names they're just doing a great job and they are kind of who I've taken a lot of inspiration from as far as trying to uh, craft the videos that I've been doing and, and, and kind of develop things. Uh, there's a great photographer out there. And even if you're not a photographer, uh, you should check out his channel. Um, his, his name is Sean Tucker. Um, I got hip to him from Bob Malone. And, of course, Bob Malone, uh, the uh, uh, legendary uh, trumpet designer, uh, over at Yamaha, Bob Malone is a is a big photographer. You know, he's he's big and heavy into photography, and he shared with me a couple of years back this video um, by Sean Tucker. And Sean's just got a way with words. He posts one video a month, and his channel is really uh, very insightful. And uh, excuse me, he's got one with uh, he's talking about uh, protect your highlights. I think that's what it's called. Uh, you know, lessons for uh, Lessons for, you know, photography and life. It's like something like that. Man, such such insightful information. So, um, you know, once I really saw kind of what a, what a craft people could make out of YouTube, I really, uh, I've really loved it for years and years, and it and it really took this uh, uh, global uh, you know calamity uh, for me to kind of uh, never blow out the highlights. That's it. Um, it really it really took this this whole uh, ordeal for me to kind of get serious and say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to start making things for YouTube and, uh, you know, get into it, put myself out there, try and help as many people as I can. Of course I can't, you know, I'm not teaching in person now and I'm not touring, um, but I want to stay active. And, you know, a year and a half ago, we started that positive trumpeters worldwide on, on Facebook, the PTW group. And I, uh, you know, really got, this great sense of community from that group and working with Troy and and Vinny and Armida and Axel and working that group and and now we've got we've got uh, a couple more moderators uh, Rachel and uh, 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 Doc Jones and we got um, Bree and uh, it's really been great to you know have that community and do all the live streams and and you know to help people out so that's kind of really what inspired me to kind of push myself and get into YouTube um, yeah let's see what the Jameson wrote here uh, Ryan Chris Smith oh Chris Smith and he's he sounds so good doesn't he Chris like Chris makes the best videos he sounds great um, Jack Trent yeah I mean there are so there are so many great people putting out just uh, amazing stuff out there. It's it's inspiring to me to be able to see all of their their hard work and effort. Um, and uh, I got to say, though, most of the most of the YouTube videos and channels that I follow are are uh, photography, tech, vloggers, uh, that type of stuff. Uh, Fro knows photo. Jared Poland. Uh, he's got a great and hilarious channel. Um, Becky and Chris, another one of my favorites. For some reason, they're like there are some great. There are some great YouTubers coming out of Canada, like really terrific, fantastic YouTubers. Uh, Peter McKinnon, uh, Becky and Chris, uh, they're Canadian, and uh, Maddie Hapoya, Canadian. Uh, really some uh, some excellent stuff coming out of there. Great storytellers. And this is a great lesson for music, you know, because in music we're telling stories. We are connecting with the audience, and it's no different in film or media, you know, to be able to connect with people online. That's what I'm trying to develop and get better at uh, because I think if I connect with people better, then I'll be able to connect with more people and help people better. So uh, that's why I wanted to, uh, you know, kind of uh, make sure I, I try this first live stream and that that I, uh, you know, incorporate some new uh, new software and be able to use this new camera and really uh, hopefully bring an experience that uh that is going to feel like I'm there with you and that you're able to warm up and, and, uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, benefit from. So 
Well, it is uh, 1038 my time, and uh, we've been going for 90 minutes. This is crazy. Uh, thank you all for uh, tuning in and for watching. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, I think I'm going to leave it up. Um, I may as well. Um, I think I'm going to do uh, another live stream next week. I'm going to try and uh, I'm going to try and get used to this and try and and see how I can up my game. Uh, maybe I can. I may need a, a box of some sort, but I think I might be able to get a uh, one of my GoPros set up to look down at the piano and maybe get a switcher. That might take a couple months, but um, we'll see if I can kind of up that a little bit and uh, take you to the next level. But for sure, thank you to. Uh, uh, everyone who's tuned in, uh, Ryan, thanks for uh, getting me hip to uh, uh, getting the mono set up on the Streamlabs OBS. And uh, uh, I'm going to shoot you a message on uh, on Facebook uh, so that we can uh, uh, we can do like a, a little a little hang or something. So, um, all right, well that is that is what we got for today. Thank you all so much uh, for tuning in. And uh, as I say at the end of all of my videos, I will see you on the next one.